Hey, what's up everyone? This is Micah hanging out here inside the Seacrest studio. And uh, you know what's really cool is I have my buddy Maya here. And what's also really cool is she's interviewing an awesome actress, Maya. Who do you have today for Maya's latest news to keep you in the groove? Christina Moses. That's <laughs> awesome. Welcome, Christina Moses. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, wow. calling in, Skyping in and talking <laughs> with us. So Maya, take it away. Okay, well, so first of all, I just want to tell you that I'm so excited to be talking to you, and I'm really starstruck right now. Um, <laughs> and um, I want to tell you that A Million Little Things is one of my very favorite shows, so I'm really hoping it gets renewed for another season. Um, so, yeah. Oh, Maria, thank you. Really, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so honored that you wanted to interview me. And um, thanks for watching our show. I, yeah, I want a season three, too. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Um, so uh, my first question for you is, who or what inspired you to start acting? Mm. Well, it's something that I... Oh, wait, I might have to go let my dog in, but I can take the computer with me. She's Ooh, outside. we're getting a tour. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll show you my doggy. One of them, I've got three. I don't know if he can, well, they're on the floor here. I've got a lab mix, a pit mix, and a little chihuahua mix. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. And they're, they love to play outside, so they were just outside. Okay, and we're back. So I grew up in Los Angeles, and my father... <clears throat> was an acting teacher and an actor um, and so was my mother they never like reached the success that they wanted to but it was just something that I was always around and my dad would put on these plays and I would watch them and then go home and mimic what I saw but I was still I was so shy though so like the moment someone started watching me I was like ah no and I would, <laughs> I would freeze and so I didn't really do it as a child. It was nothing that I really wanted to, to do then. But eventually, um, and my dad tried. Oh, my God. He took me all over Hollywood. I was auditioning for everything. And I was like, ah, please stop. And then when I got older and I was in high school, I started to do just theater at school. I was an artist. I painted. I write. I still do those things. And so theater was just another outlet for me. And then it was just something I kind of kept doing as a hobby. And eventually, like around 2005, but more so like 2008 was when I really was like, okay, I, I really don't want to live without this. I can't. Um, and there's just tons of actors and actresses out there that inspire me. I used to watch the classics when I was a kid. And um, yeah, I just... I love it. <laughs> cool. Um, so, what's your favorite part about playing Regina on A Million Little Things? Good question. Um, I like that Regina is very solution oriented. You know, given the life that she she had, that wasn't always that easy for her. Um, the way she deals with her stress and confrontation or problems is to just go forward and to find a solution and not really kind of stay um, stuck in any kind of mental and emotional anguish. So what I like about that is because for me, sometimes I could wallow and stuff. I've dealt with anxiety and depression my whole life. So, you know, in like to just be able to look at a situation and immediately try to find out how to navigate forward in the best way possible is something that I admire in people. And then what I also love is that Regina is look is now also learning to deal with emotions and be with them and not necessarily bypass them to get to a solution because we need both of those things. And so 
having a husband and friends who are depressed or dealing with illnesses, <clears throat> it forces her to actually really be present to that so much so that she's now willing to face the uh, dysfunction and the abuse that she suffered and her own emotions around that. So I think she's learning to kind of balance those both, those two things. Oh, cool. Uh, <laughs> and she wants to hang out with really fun, cool people. <laughs> um, uh, can you relate to her in any way? Um, yeah, I can. I think that she's a really good friend and I'm a good friend. I, at least I think I am and I've been told I am. I have a lot of love and support in my life and Regina does too. And um, I like her loyalty. I think I can be very loyal. I am very loyal. Um, and what I like, what I really related to, especially last season was just that uh, desire to like live her dream, but then also be like kind of confronted with her fears of failure. And I've gone through that as, as an actress and as an artist, you know, just that battle of like, do I let my fears stop me or do I go forward into what my heart is calling for, what my dreams are? Uh, and then you succeed and you deal with the challenges along the way. And yeah. Um, yeah, I like um, just when you were saying that um, you have anxiety, I do too, and I've had like multiple panic attacks in like the past week, um, so I, like, I, a million little things, just it's like, it's a show that it can be hard to watch and very emotional but it also just makes me happy because I just love the characters and so yeah. what's your favorite storyline right now with it with the show mm. I don't know I really like the um, Regina and Rome story oh, yeah. with Eve yeah uh huh that's yeah the- that's a crazy one it's only gonna get more interesting <laughs> <laughs> else. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I know, like, panic attacks are not fun. Like, I've had them. I'm so sorry you're having them this week. Um, but there's something so beautiful about being able to watch and see, like, either to watch something completely funny and just take our minds away from something like that's a healing in and of itself. And then also to see like real things happen that we can super do- relate to in some capacity or, or that causes us to cry or, you know, cause then we get to release emotions that are like bottled up inside. Yeah. So the fact that our show like helps that in any way is like the greatest gift in the world. So thank you for just supporting and watching and sharing that. <laughs> yeah. I love uh-huh. her mom, Angela's beanie. It's really cute. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, my mom got it for me. Have you been to LA? No, but I really want to. Yeah. That's like on my bucket list. Good. Yeah. Good. So when all of this crazy goes away and you're able to, it'd be awesome to I don't know if I'll be in LA, but if I ever just meet you in person, say hi. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> well, I can say anytime you're uh, here in Colorado, um, just let yeah. us know. Um, and you can okay. come on into the studio if you want to um, like hang out with us. There'll be a bunch of kids that would love to meet you. So I would love that. Yeah. So you can always, you can always anytime you want to stop by in Colorado and stop by the Seacrest okay. studio here at Children's Hospital Colorado, that is an okay. option. It's an open invitation. Oh that would that would be cool. Yeah. Okay, noted. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, what was your uh, favorite episode to film, at least so far? Oh my gosh, I, it's hard to pinpoint one. Um, well, there's like. <clears throat> Actually, okay, well, okay, my first answer to that is, like, any time 
there's a the, we are having ensemble scenes like when the whole cast is together that was I love because we actually love each other <laughs> and we might be hanging out and so we just like have the best time we're constantly making each other laugh it's not great for the director because it's like herding cats when we're together <laughs> like it just it's non-stop but we have a really great time. So all the scenes we, where we're together are my favorite. And then um, this last episode, I, was it last night? Yeah, last night. Um, I really had fun with that one. Anytime I get to work with my mother, the woman who plays my mother on the show, Romy. Yeah, because she's incredible and she's hilarious. Like, Hilarious. <laughs> so you know, pain in the butt sometime on the show. <laughs> Could be nicer, but she's, but it's fun. Like she's funny because she's just that person who just like puts her foot in her mouth all the time and just says all the mean, wrong, inappropriate things. And she's, and the way she does it is, <laughs> it just makes me laugh. So. <laughs> <laughs> um. So um, you've guest starred and had recurring roles in a ton of shows, including um, Rosewood, Twisted, and the originals. Have you had a favorite project or character that you've played? Um, I'd say my favorite was doing one of the, it's called Condor. Um, I did that for the Audience Network Direct TV. So it's on ADT Uverse, which is like they had. They're trying to do their own, so they have a bunch of shows. But it's like if you don't have Direct TV, Uverse, like ADT Uverse, or yeah, then you can't really watch it. So I didn't really like. You, but it's it's based off of this 1960 something movie called. Um, Three Days of Condor, based on the book Six Days of Condor. <clears throat> and uh, it's like CIA spy conspiracy theory stuff and now in like just real politics that's still uphold today. And um, so I got to play this like FBI person who had to be a mole in the CIA because like some crazy stuff was happening and I kind of got roped into it. And I worked with incredible actors, William Hurt, Mira Savino. Those are the two. And, um, oh my God. Um, why can I think, um, I got his Irons, Jeremy Irons' son. Why can I not say his name, Joe? Because I'm thinking Joe, his character in Max. Ooh, God. Anyway, <laughs> so and it was yeah, so like to be able to work with those people was such like oh my God, like working with Mira and and William Hurt was just beyond amazing, and I learned so much from them, um, and we worked so well together. But yeah, it was really fun to play like spy person you know what I mean because like yeah. in real life, that would be so scary and I would totally suck at it because I can't lie really well <laughs> and like, I'm afraid of everything but like you know just be able to yeah it was really cool so that by far is my favorite and it was shot like a movie it's four cables so you have a lot more uh creative freedom to do certain things um and then I would say, on par with, like, I love playing Regina. I love A Million Little Things so much. Um, and then the Originals was great because I love Julie Pleck, the creator of the show. Like she's basically gave me my start, um, my real start. And and I love the Originals. <laughs> I watched it before I did it because I had some friends on it. And I saw a couple episodes. And then when she offered me the part, I binged watched the whole thing because I got super obsessed because I love like vampires and that whole thing it's really fun and yeah I got hooked so it was that was fun just because I, I liked the stories that they were telling and so I got to be a part of it and be a werewolf and who doesn't want to be a werewolf so <laughs> yeah yeah especially yeah. especially in a show where you can just have fun and like you said yeah. there's more there's a larger variety of things you can do when it's a 
like kind of a separate production rather than just normal TV. Yeah. 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 Um, yes. Yeah, so, uh, you were in the rom-com how we met. Um, yeah. do you have any fun stories or memories from filming? We shot that movie for a thousand dollars. It was my, yes, my friend's very first feature. Um, they have a production company called the Knights Young and they are brilliant writers and everything they do, they just get better and better and better. Their films now look incredible and they, um, yeah, they're going to be like huge one day. I, I believe in them so much. Uh, but yeah, this is the very first thing they ever did. And they're both uh, the two guys, the two writers, um, and they were also in the show. So Chad, the guy who, the main guy who played my, I was his love interest. And then the guy, he played my ex-boyfriend in the movie. He was the DJ from like England. Okay, yeah. so those are the two writers and creators of that show, of, the, of that movie. <clears throat> and they're both from Flagstaff, Arizona. So we went back to Flagstaff. Um, and then they're really good friend Oscar, who's a great editor. That was his first time directing. Um, and their other friend, Alex, he came along. He was also, he played one of the detectives and he's a part of their company as well. And so they had like all of these connections in Arizona for, for cheap. So we got every, like food for free, locations for free most of the time, um, like permits you know like either we got a permit or we were able to use places without getting a permit so um it took like we were shooting i don't know like 20 hours a day it was insane we were shooting so much we hardly slept we banged this thing out in two weeks and yeah and um so one night we had like permission to use this park where there there's a lake in a in a park and uh we had to be out by a certain time um but we couldn't lock it down so that means like if people were to come like we would have to just deal with people being there and stop shooting if we needed it to be quiet and so we were shooting this very intimate scene where we have the body behind us and we're <laughs> on the park bench um just kind of trying to make sense of it and getting to know each other and then um, so it needs to be really quiet. So we decided, okay, we're just going to shoot at midnight. Like, who's going to go to a lake at midnight? <laughs> yeah, we'll go to a lake at midnight, apparently, in Flagstaff, because, oh, my God, it was the perfect night. We were like, we're going to get through this, maybe go to bed early even. No, no. So at midnight, these guys decided to come and wakeboard. <laughs> I don't, do you know what wakeboarding is? I, no. I, don't, we don't, I don't, Lisa, I don't know. We don't do but basically, you have a motorboat <laughs> and this <laughs> piece of wood, this board, this something, and you just stand on it and it attach it to the boat. And then it's like skiing, but on a board, basically. And so we need it to be quiet because you have a, a microphone. And as you know, like it will pick up everything. And so every like five, ten minutes, we have to stop because they're playing music and the motor of the boat was going. So what should have taken like three hours took like 10. And we left when the marathoners were coming up, coming at like six in the morning. It was. Wow. That's a long night. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we left at eight in the morning. So yeah, it was, it was intense, but we got it. But it was funny. Yeah. Did you have a long night, Maya? Uh, no. Oh, okay. You were just <laughs> but, but Christina talking about that made me tired. The so. talking about being <laughs> up all night long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, um, what's your favorite thing about acting? I think the f- I love being able to, oh, there's so many ways I can answer this. Um, I love playing different characters, even though I haven't quite played like a character, like I wouldn't consider myself a character actor. I though I would love to actually start playing in that realm some more. 
but they're all different. They all have different stories, the people that I'm playing. Um, and so just being able to try on different lives to see where these people live inside of me to express different parts of myself that I didn't know I could. Um, I like that it's really, it's challenging because to be watched like that, and I'm not even thinking of like the audience, you know, because it's just a camera, but you have your whole crew and you have your people you're in a scene with and you have a camera in your face. And so for me particularly, that's like, and a lot of actors too, you know, a lot of actors are actually really kind of shy or introverted and to be able to like let all of that go or at least as much as you can and you get so like locked in in the story and the other person and it's kind of a magical feeling because nothing else matters and you're not, when this happens, like you're not controlling the outcome or how you think you should feel or what you think you should look like. You're just being in the moment with another person creating. Um, so those are, that's my favorite, especially on stage. Like being, doing theater is pretty magical and frightening. <laughs> Wonderful. For, for all those reasons, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so um, now for a very hard question. Um, what's your favorite show of all time? Oh my God! <laughs> what? <Well, laughs> I'm to answer that. Show of all time. Okay, well, I think. Oh my God, there's so many. <laughs> I think for network television. My favorite two. I have two. Can I do two? Yeah. Okay. For network television, I would say it would be Parenthood and Friday Night Lights. Have you seen any of those? Either of those? <laughs> no, but I, <laughs> but my mom has, and I've heard of them. So <laughs> I, I okay. If you like a million little things, watch Parenthood. Okay. It's so good. Oh my god! Every single episode are gonna be bawling. <laughs> but Friday Night Lights is like, especially the first two, three seasons, is magic. It's just, it's really cool. And the way they shot it was like handheld and it look, it's just, it's so cool. I highly recommend it. Okay. Um, yeah, that would probably be my favorite. I would say, yeah, Friday Night Lights probably. And then, oh my God, for cable? There's way too many. <laughs> what are yours? I know. See, <laughs> yeah. um, I know two are definitely um, uh, friends and how I met your mother. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Um, and then a million little things is on that list. What? Uh, yeah. And I don't know. There are a couple that. Yeah. Stumptown. That's also on the oh, list. Oh, it's good. I haven't seen yeah. that one. Oh, it's yeah. So good. Is yeah, it? yeah. Okay. Uh, oh my God, there's so many. I'm trying to think. Well, Shameless is one of them, but we don't have to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's on time or something. Yeah. Homeland. Okay. Homeland. Okay. There Great. you go. Yeah, and one thing we always say for any of our friends who are watching here is like always just check in with your parents and let them check it out first, and then uh, then yeah. you can watch it. And it's usually for bigger kids, so totally Thank all right. For, thank you. Yep, do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, another show is um, the Neighborhood. Oh yeah, I haven't seen that either, but it's good. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, I would say. Huh. Oh, sorry, what? No, no, no. I was going to say about Friends. I just started watching that recently again because sometimes you just need to laugh, like, a lot yeah. and not have to sit down and watch every... It's so good. Like, their comedic like, timing and ability is amazing. Have you ever seen any of their blooper reels? No, I haven't. If you YouTube them, you can... 
I think, yeah. Is that safe to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's safe to say, yeah. Because, again, anything when you're looking up on YouTube, just check in with your parents and it's all good. Right, right, from there. Yeah, and it's just the Friends cast being really funny. Anyway, oh, okay. what were you going to say? <laughs> I'll, look it, I'll um, look it up afterwards. Okay. Um, but... Um, yeah, now I don't remember what. Ah, I don't remember. I forgot. <laughs> now I that happens to me all the time. I'll be in the middle of talking, and then it just goes right out my brain, mm-hmm. and I'll just be like, "I'm talking, but I forgot where I was going mm-hmm. with this." So well, it's meant to come back. It will. Yeah. <laughs> No, um, my um, sister and I were taking our dog for a walk earlier and there was like this big pile of snow and our dog was, I was holding on to him and he started climbing it and so <laughs> I was kind of going after him and I like tripped over it. And I didn't fall, so but I just started <laughs> laughing, and my sister started laughing too, and she was like, "What just happened? Are you okay?" <laughs> and then, and then I felt I tripped when, like, I was, I was just walking on like the, like the grass. I wasn't like going up a hill or anything, and I just. It fell over. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> I, yeah. like I trip over my own feet. I'm like, what is happening right now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I always blame so, it on sticky shoes. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, is there a show that you're currently binge watching? Um, well, no, I was, oh, I did, I just, I haven't been able to watch a lot of TV lately, um, because I've been so busy and and I was traveling, but right before I watched, this might, I mean, you'll definitely have to get permission for this one, so, but I was watching, um, The Watchmen. Oh. Yeah. And then, so that was the last thing I binged, binged. Um, And then I would say, I feel like, I I always forget when people ask me, like, what movies I like or what I watch. I'm like, I don't know. But I know, like, I do watch things. I just forget all the time. Um, There's this really, I think, very funny show. It's a Canadian show, but... um, so, but it airs on Netflix. It's called Shit's Creek, and it's really, really, really funny. And I'm obsessed with it. So I've already seen it, but sometimes I'll just play it like friends. Like I'll do that and just have it and watch it. Yeah. So I'll like watch a few episodes. So it's not quite binging because I've already seen it, but it's really funny. Yeah. Um, my mom had. Um, she when the show first premiered, she was watching it, and then she told. My si- me and my sister about it, and so then we all started watching it and became obsessed with it. <laughs> it's so good. I'm so obsessed. Yeah. You have no idea. <laughs> yeah, there's That's this scary. one scene. I don't even remember what episode it was, but there's still this one scene that I like. Just I start thinking about at like random times, and then I just start laughing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um Yeah. So, um what is your biggest pet peeve? Hmm. My biggest pet peeve, I think when That's a good question. Um Let's see. I don't live with roommates anymore, so that doesn't. Let's see. Um, my biggest pet peeve, I think, like if you're just being quiet, you know, and you're sharing space and you're reading a book, like reading a book, and it's clear, and you, like you haven't been in a conversation, and then someone just comes and starts talking to you. Oh yeah. I'm like, I'm reading a book. She's like, excuse me, say something. But, like, don't just sit and talk and talk and talk. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> that's it. I mean, there's more, but well, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have a lot. And always when I ask that question, usually um, the person who answers it, my mom is the same way with this. When we hear their answer, we're like, oh, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's us <laughs> too. Me too. What's one of yours? Oh, um, I don't like when... I don't know. There are like people like clearing their throats or like they're sniffling, and it just, I don't know, it just like drives me crazy, and I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. With your mouth open. Oh, yeah. Oh, bueno. Yeah. <laughs> Please stop it. <laughs> like that snacking. Noise. And my dog does it because he like licks himself relentlessly and it's just like this smacking sound like oh, yeah. <sighs> not okay. <laughs> yeah. When my dog does that, it puts me. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so uh what do you do in your free time? I read, watch TV. Um I if I'm <clears throat> like working in Canada, for example, I'm so close to the beach and the forest, like much close. I mean, I'm actually kind of, cl- it's just different. You know, LA is more desert, um, drier, and the beach is definitely, at least for me, very far away. Uh, but in Canada, like it's just, you're in a rainforest basically, like it's all nature and then there's a city. So. I would spend a lot of time in the forest with my dogs in the beach. Uh, so I, I love to be outside. Um, so that kind of stuff. And then when I really have free time, I paint. And I just try to be creative. I like to make things. So it doesn't really matter what I'm making. But I, I like to make little sculptures of objects together and... Um, yeah, and I write and try to spend time with friends, people I love. I love going to the movies, eating. Love to eat. (laughs) 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 So I like to go out to eat or cook with friends or cook by myself. Yeah. Spending time with my dogs is pretty much takes up all my time. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Uh So, uh, right now, with all the craziness in the world, how are you coping with having to stay inside? Well, I'm kind of a homebody, so it's okay. What makes it more, what the challenge is, is the fact that I can't just get up and go to the store without being really mindful of what I'm touching or who's around or how close I am or, you know, um, I can't just go hang out with friends. I can't, you know what I mean? So the restrictions that are there, like I love being home. Like I have so much to do um, here that I have because I haven't been home in nine months really. I visit, but I haven't been at my house because I've been working. So, um so yeah, like I love to be home. I'm, I I meditate. I love to like just be in my own space. But the the restrictions is what is the challenge, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely a homebody too. So like I don't mind being home. Yeah. Um, like it just feels like, you know, this week was um, uh, my sister and I was. It's our spring break this week. Mm. From school, and I'm like, it just feels like a regular break, yeah. just staying home watching movies. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. So, I'm just trying to be okay. But is it is is Colorado on lockdown or no? Um, no, it's uh, it's okay. not. Um, we still there's places that are still open. They just have closed, like restaurants and places, and no groups over fifty. Oh, okay. So, okay. Um, but. Yeah. Um, A lot of movies to catch up on, so I'm actually really looking forward to that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we've watched a lot of movies on, like, On Demand and Disney Plus and Mm -hmm. Netflix, so... 
Yeah, I have Frozen 2 to watch on Disney+, Plus, which I hear is good. Have you seen it? Yeah. Good? It's, yeah, it's really good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Olaf. really excited. Huh? Olaf is so funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. One of my favorite parts of uh, Frozen 2 is uh, when Kristoff and um, Sven do have like their own song. That's really quite hilarious. Okay. Yeah. Oh, when it's like a music video. Exactly. Huh? That, that is my favorite. It's so funny. Oh, yay. <laughs> it's fantastic. You'll know exactly when it happens. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anything else I should watch on Disney Plus? Because I have it. I just haven't watched anything. But I know they've got like everything. Yeah, there's um a movie called Timmy Failure. Mistakes were made. That's good. Mm-hmm. Um, there are so many movies. I can't like remember any of them right now. You remember any? Yeah, but yeah. um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, okay, I was just about to tell you something, and now I can't remember. <laughs> <what>. No! no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, but um, if you could be any fictional character, who would it be and why? Oh, fictional character. Who would I be and why? Um, okay, let me think of all my favorites. So, I love Wonder Woman. I love Han Solo. I love, um, who else do I love? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean... If I could be Moana, (laughs) she's so cool. Like, she, you know, I mean, I'm a lot older than Moana, but if I could, I mean, just, like, how brave she is. Yeah. She's she's so cool. Like, I love that she just followed her, her heart. She wasn't afraid. She just went for what she knew was right so that she could save her people. And I just, I, I love I love that. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I actually um wanted to tell you I um for a couple weeks ago the International Women's Day mm-hmm. I um, made a collage of like all the female characters on TV that inspire me and Regina was one of them. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Um, so, um, if you could have any song playing to announce your entrance into a room, what song would it be? Oh my God! You ask such good questions. Uh, <laughs> or what's one of your favorite songs right now? Oh, okay. Well. Cause they're not actually the same. So what it came to my mind, I'm just going to go, cause I have like a lot of songs that I love, but this is what came to my mind about announcing me in a room. And it's totally not my favorite song, but mm-hmm. I like what it says. It's, you know, that song golden it, it's my, it's yeah. You're 17. You're 17. Yeah. Yeah. You were like, I don't know. Eight when it came out, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's it's by Jill Scott, um, and it's called "Live." And the whole I cannot sing, so I'm not going to do it for you. But "Living My Life Like It's Golden" is the the main. Do you know that song? I, know I feel like know. I do. Yeah, it's like "Living My Life Like It's Golden, Golden." Living yeah, yeah. Like I, I, yeah, I think I've heard that song. Okay. So that's what. Because I, I I love the idea of living my life like it's golden because life is really precious and fragile and we never know. It's, you know, we just have to take care of it. So I love that. And just to like to express my heart and 
uh, live my life to the fullest. Okay, so yeah, there's that. My favorite song right now. I have no idea. I've just way too many. Oh, um, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I'm gonna have to. Well, there's this really great artist I like right now, Gregory Allen Isaacoff. It's just beautiful. Anyway, <laughs> that's a lot to them. <laughs> You're like. Um, so um is there someone you've met that you've been completely starstruck by kind of yeah because i i i mean that i've actually met i mean there's certain people to this day like i haven't met that if i saw them i'd be like oh my god um but growing up in LA, I have seen a lot. Like they're just everywhere, and I, you know, kind of grew up in a school that the kids' parents were actors, and my mom worked at Warner Brothers for a very long time, and so I would kind of see people uh, around. You know, just got used to actors, I guess. And then, <clears throat> so when I went to go shoot Condor, um, I was working with William Hurt, which is this incredible actor, and Mirrors Bray, I already said that. Uh, but I wasn't particularly starstruck. I was just like in awe, and you know. But we had a director who came on set and did three episodes. His name is Andrew, this is totally way before your time. But his name is Andrew McCarthy, McCartney, McCarthy, sorry. And he was in all of our coming of age movies so like what would be one of yours now uh oh my god no mean girls is even i think before your time what's a good i have no idea what would be an equivalent um well first i want to say i love andrew mccarthy you do know him of course you do because you're really wait what so like breath okay so john hughes right he did all these movies so he was in chair uh what was the one i'm thinking of um St. Emil's Fire. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he was like, you know, in all of these movies, like 16, uh, was it 16 Candles? Or, um, yeah. No, the other one. Was it 16 Candles? I get them all mixed up. 16 Candles and what's that other one? Pretty in Pink? Yeah, Pretty in Pink. And so he was in all of these movies that, you know, when I was like six and seven and eight and 10 and 12, that were like all these coming of age like movies so when i saw him in real life as a directing out he was the one that i was kind of starstruck by cool. yeah and a lot of the people my age there were because we were like oh my god it's andrew from all these movies that we saw as kids and it was just a yeah oh i love, I love him. him that's so cool so cool <laughs> you know? um so, but I feel like, I feel like those are also, like, if you watch those movies, they're still coming of age. Totally. Today. But then I think also for, like, today, I feel like Love, Simon is one. Uh, yeah, 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 yes. Yeah. Totally. And even, like, things like Booksmart or, oh, yeah. oh, such a good movie, um, they're a little bit different now, but yeah, like, oh my God, there are some that are really, really good, but I don't remember. That's my pro I have to like look things up, my <laughs> but there are quite a few today that are really, really comparable and good, like, like those little John Hughes movies. Um, I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, when you're having a bad day, what do you do to make yourself feel better? Great question. Um, if I have, well, I try to get outside, try to go to the forest, hang out with my dogs. Um, if I'm in LA, there's no forest, but I go hiking up behind my house. I um, dance in my apartment. Like getting my energy out and moving is really, really helpful. Uh, 
Yeah, I love to dance around my apartment um, or my house here. Excuse me. I try to write, just like free writing, not thinking about what I'm saying, just letting myself write. Uh, and then, you know, sometimes I will put on like something funny if I just really don't want to think about anything. Um, put on a funny movie or a feel good movie. But I'll mm, meditate. But that doesn't always make me feel better. Cool. Um, so is there a motto or quotation that you live by? Wow. She asks all the serious questions. I love it. I love it. No one does this. It's great. Um, what I live by. Yeah. Um, I think real fearlessness is, I can actually get it for you, but as I might butcher it, but real fearlessness is the, I mean, the meaning is basically, is, is being like, sharing ourself without resistance or shyness, Hmm. you know, that like, like fearlessness is a product of tenderness. Um, not being afraid to look at myself in the eye, look at my problems and issues directly. Um, Yeah, I think being tender, sharing my heart without resistance or, or shyness, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and it, and it doesn't mean like you just have to share all the time and be open. Like boundaries are really important, you know, like really taking care of ourselves and honoring what is right for, for ourselves, our bodies, our minds, our emotions, our heart, you know. Um, but there's a way of, of holding, like holding ourselves safe and protecting ourselves and having boundaries without shutting our hearts down without judging someone else, you know, putting up walls while protecting ourselves at the same time. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. That's a great quote and something that uh, is really important for everyone to remember. So that's, that's really yeah. awesome. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, so um, my last question for you, well, first, before I ask you my last question, I just want to say, like, I just want to stay on the phone with you or I Skype know. with you. Like, I just want to talk to you all the time. That was really cool. I was, I literally was just thinking that. I'm like, I could, I could do this forever. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> um. So my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Wow. I think there's so many. I think anyone who um, is faced with adversity, you know, whether that is mental illness, physical illness, you know, the things that typically would stop someone from doing anything that makes them happy, from stopping them from connecting and living with other people, having relationships with people, living a life, following their dreams. You know, even people who don't, it's not necessarily a mental or physical uh, illness or sickness or whatever, but it just their actual circumstances, <clears throat> you know, um, that are the hardship. But when they don't let those things, doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean it's not real or, you know, but where you can just, you still 
or like, well, I have a life that's worth living. I have a heart that's worth um, giving and receiving love. And, and you do, oh, it's going to make me cry even thinking about it. But just people who really live their life um, when they can just give up. <laughs> You know what I mean? When they could just give up because of whatever their inner or outer circumstances are. You know, um, those are superheroes to me. People who just keep loving and keep living and keep laughing and keep, you know, they don't let stuff stop them. It's so admirable to me. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's easy. It's so easy to give up, you know? It's so easy to be like, I can't do this. I don't know. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, thank you so much for calling in. I had a blast talking to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I think you're one of those superheroes. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'm you're not- a superhero to me, so. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Christina, for calling in. Really appreciate it. And uh, um, that wraps up our like special edition of Maya's Latest News. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in and uh, enjoying this Come awesome on. interview. Woo-hoo. Yeah, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for the questions. And I really, really am very honored to be here. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you, everyone. Right. Bye. Bye.